So a few weeks in the Platinum Podcast, we discussed a little bit of what makes a great trophy list for us. This is probably a good time to plug the Platinum Podcast, isn't it? All right. In the last episode, we were joined once again by the amazing Amigos, also known as Platchomp. We did a few quick fire rounds of questions, which ended up being slow fire rounds of questions to get to know them better. It was great fun. I'll leave the link down below. Go check it out. Now onto the lists. I got this idea from Platinum Bro. Surprise, surprise. So to start things off, this is solely my opinion, and it should be taken completely that way. Everybody sees trophy lists differently, and that's okay. So at ease, keyboard warriors. For example, me and Platinum Bro, we're both trophy hunters, and we both review people's trophy lists. So essentially, we should both look at trophy lists and think of them exactly the same, right? Right. right. Wrong. We're completely different. Platinum Bro loves looking at ultra rares, and he's really obsessed with 100%. Me, on the other hand, I'm not too bothered about ultra rares or 100%. I like to see hard platinum. Now you guys are probably scratching your heads thinking, what the hell is this guy talking about? But bear with me, I'll explain. So first of all, we have to separate these trophy lists into two different sections, because on one side, you've got the game's trophy list, which is basically the requirements that you need to do in order to get the platinum trophy. And on the other hand, you've got people's trophy list, which is basically all the platinums that somebody has obtained to have them on their list. But let's start off with a game's trophy list. There are certain things that are always in a game's trophy list, and that is the story-based trophies. So basically, every trophy that's assigned to a specific task from the game's story that you most likely will automatically get. But sometimes attached to that, there are also difficulty trophies. And I don't mind difficulty trophies as long as they balance the higher difficulty. For example, The Witcher 3 does this really well. You have to basically become a Witcher. You have to do research before jumping into battle to see enemies' weaknesses and vulnerabilities. Another game that does this really well is Jedi Fallen Order. Although there's no difficulty trophies in the game, they make the parry window smaller the higher the difficulty is. And things like this make the higher difficulties not only challenging, but also fun, rather than straight up annoying or unfair. The Kingdom Hearts series is terrible for this. The higher the difficulty, the more health enemies have, and the more damage you take. This sometimes makes the game unbearable because of how unfair it can be, especially during the first few hours of the game when your gear is basic. The most logical thing to do to actually give players a difficulty and make the game fair is just take away the difficulty options and just make the game hard. From software, our masters are doing this and it's no coincidence that the games are so enjoyable to play. Although they're hard as hell, it most likely always makes you want to go back for more because it's fair. You know, in most cases when you die, it's your own damn fault. The next thing a trophy list will most likely have are miscellaneous trophies. Whether it be discovering a new area, find a secret boss, or doing a certain type of skill. Whatever it is, I personally like them. And more times than not, it makes you explore areas that you wouldn't normally go to or do things that you, you know, wouldn't even know about sometimes. It makes you go a bit out of your comfort zone, and I like that. Now, from this point, we're going to start going a bit into, like, annoying territory for me. And open world games are especially guilty of this. Now, the first one is map clearing. Map clearing can destroy your opinion of a game so fast if there's too much of it, or if it's too repetitive. Games like Ghost of Tsushima that are incredible, but then have an insane amount of map clearing tasks and side missions that all feel the same, make getting the Platinum so tedious. If there isn't that much of a variety of things to do in such a big map, just have less of them on the map. You don't have to fill the map with countless tasks of the same things over and over and over again. Make them few but meaningful. That's it. You know, there are games out there that are just average and they still have a ton of, you know, map clearing things to do that just feel tedious. <laughs> Assassin's Creed. Now, hand in hand with map clearing and side missions, there are usually collectibles as well. Now, I don't always mind collectibles. Just let me know where they are. I hate games that don't give you a collectible tracker and then they tie a trophy to said collectible. That's just stupid. And to make things even worse, most collectibles aren't even meaningful. Let me give you a few examples. God of War 2018 was one of the best games I've ever played, but collecting ravens was just straight up annoying. Not only is there no point to collecting the ravens, but there's no tracker on the game as well. So if you played the game and collected a few ravens on your way to the end of the game, and then you want to go back and collect the rest of the ravens, you have to basically look at a guide from start to finish and check all those locations because you don't know if you've picked that raven up or not. That's silly. And then for example, you have Spider-Man. They had collectible backpacks that give you little Easter eggs. There are about 55 of them, if I'm not mistaken, but they all had a bit of a nostalgia that made it bearable and interesting. Or for example, in Mafia 3, where you had the Playboy magazines that give you research material. 
But let's be honest, most games just jam a stupid amount of collectibles into the game. They have no meaning whatsoever just to make you play the game for longer. Like how many times have you picked up a collectible in the game and you didn't even bother to check what the hell it was? Now, like I said, I'm not completely against collectibles. Some of them can be fun, but if you are gonna put them in a game, at least have some meaning to them. Or if they don't have a lot of meaning, don't jam 700 collectibles for people to collect for no reason whatsoever. <laughs> Assassin's Creed. Now I'm gonna be moving a bit more into the hated territory. So first up, missables. Missables are annoying as hell. Now, if a game requires more than one playthrough to get the platinum, I'm not that bothered about missables because I'm going to have to do another playthrough anyway. But if the game is long, like 100 hours, and they put missable trophies in that game, that's fucked up. One of the most sneaky and uncalled things for you to do as a developer. Yes, I'm looking at you, Witcher 3. I love you as one of the best games I have ever played as well, but the missables are a joke. You either have to play the whole game blindly and, you know, hope to God you don't miss anything, which by the way, with The Witcher 3 is near impossible, or you have to go into a guide to see what is missable and what you have to do in order to not miss it, and you'll most likely get spoiled. So missables are definitely a massive hate for me. The next hate of mine is grindy trophies. Now I don't mind a little bit of grinding as long as it's not overwhelming. I understand developers, you know, they wanna make you play the game for as long as possible. So grindy trophies, I can understand. But grinding for hours on end so you can reach a certain level or get a certain item. Doing the same boring thing over and over and over and over again for endless hours is soul destroying. Soul destroying. And some games have the cheek to make you have to do it online. How despicable. Which also brings me to my final hate which is the multiplayer. Now, I don't have a big problem with games that have a multiplayer. You know, I'm not jealous at all that people have friends to play games online with rather than having to go into the internet and scout for random people who are willing to give you a bit of their time. I'm not jealous at all of that. But please, please do not bind multiplayer trophies to the Platinum. You're basically forcing people to play the game as soon as it's released because, you know, people are scared that the servers are gonna close at any moment and that Platinum will be unobtainable forever. Just do what Ghost of Tsushima did and just have a different, you know, trophy set for the multiplayer alone and just leave the Platinum as a single player experience. <laughs> I could already see the 100% completionist ready to like roll up their sleeves and give me a load of abuse in the comments, but hear me out. Like I said in the beginning of the video, this is my opinion and my opinion alone. And I'm not bothered about 100% in games. This is why I said it. I just like to have Platinums. Percentage means nothing to me. I will quite happily have a game in my list that is on 40%, but I have the Platinum Trophy 4. It doesn't bother me in any way, shape or form. By the way, I do actually have games like that. That's not me. And I hope people watching this, that is the same with you. <laughs> say i'm a cheapskate i don't want to pay extra money for dlcs what the wrong with you but you know each to their own that's just me it's disgusting now that we cover the game trophy list let's move on to the personal trophy list i don't know why i'm doing this with my hands like you stupid i'm gonna compare myself again to platinum bro you know because i can talk freely about him and he doesn't mind he's an awesome dude he's one of my bros and i love his face unfortunately not the same can be said for platinum check anyway for platinum bro percentage ultra rare and quantity of platinums is something he looks for in people's lists which is fair enough those are really big factors to look at but for me it's a little bit different so first of all i don't care about percentages in any way shape or form i've said it before and because i don't look at them it's not something i look at for anybody else's list either i don't really look at ultra rares either it's not because I don't rate them at all. It's just because an ultra rare doesn't always mean that the trophy is hard to get. Sometimes it just means that not many people have that game or not many people have obtained that trophy. In fact, I found that the harder the game, the less likely it is to have an ultra rare trophy because the game is notoriously hard. People will want to get that to prove themselves. And so the more people have that trophy, the less it's gonna be an ultra rare. From Software games are so guilty of this. There's so many trophies that are not ultra rare, but they're so hard to get because so many people have them because 
Like I said, they want to prove themselves. Finally, the quantity of Platinums doesn't really appeal to me a lot. I'm not going to say it doesn't appeal to me at all. I mean, it's always nice to go into a list and see, you know, somebody with 300, 400, 500 Platinums. But then when you delve into their list, they're all easy games. Nowadays, anybody with a little bit extra money and extra time can get 300 Platinums of easy games that, you know, will take you about an hour. There's thousands of videos out there that tell you which games give you that. So that's why I don't really look at quantity. Basically, the only thing I look at is the type of Platinums you have. The harder they are to get, the more impressed I'm going to be. And that's exactly what I look for when I'm ranking people's lists. That's basically what my whole ranking is about. The harder the Platinum is to get, the more points is worth. The more accumulative points you get, the higher you'll be ranked. I'll always be more impressed with somebody that's got like six Platinums, but they're all hard to get compared to somebody with 60 Platinums, but they're all easy. That to me shows you have incredible dedication, persistence, and also you're probably not roofed in right. And I can totally relate to that. It's also made me want to play more hard games. I used to play hard games anyway, but ranking people's lists and seeing how hardcore some lists can be has made me want to play more hard games, which is why I'm working on Devil May Cry 5 at the moment. So ultimately to impress me, you just need to have a ton of hard Platinums in your list and I'll be impressed regardless of how many Platinums you have. And to me, that's what makes a great trophy list, whether it be personal or in-game. Remember once again, this is just my personal opinion. Everybody will look at trophy lists differently and you'll look for different things as well. This is what makes discussions like this so much fun, how much variety there can be in opinions. Ultimately, what people think of your trophy list should mean nothing to you. As long as you're happy with your trophy list, that's all that matters. Play what you want to play, platinum what you want to platinum, and just have fun with it. Also remember to be nice to each other. This is still a pretty small community of trophy hunters. It is getting bigger, but it's still pretty small. It's a, it's a pretty specific niche. And I've seen like a ton of people online being like, oh, you should be a trophy hunter if you haven't got this platinum, or you are not a trophy hunter because you've gotten that amount of platinums. The way I see it, if you take that step to get a trophy that you wouldn't normally get just for playing the game, you're automatically a trophy hunter. You're hunting for trophies. So let's stick together and be strong instead of putting each other down. Are there any other things that I missed? Do you agree or disagree with my choices? Let me know down below in the comments and I might make a follow up video with your answers. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Keep up to date with everything Peruski by following me on social media. All those links are down below in the description. And that was it for this one, Peruski clan. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye Peruski out.